All right guys, what is up? Today we are going to be doing the fuel system in our NA2T swap. And this is going to be a crazy awesome fuel system. It's going to be pretty cheap too, which is why I like it. Well, cheap is a relative term. You know, it depends on how you do it yourself. Um, but I did find some great deals on uh, all these injectors. Um, so this is basically what our setup is going to be. Um, we are going to have 6AN um, lines going everywhere. If you guys don't know, I've already run 6AN lines to my engine bay um, previously when I upgraded my fuel pump and my fuel system um, just because I kept having problems with the lines blowing off and it was really annoying me so I just you know, I just spit the, spit the bullet and went all 6AN everywhere. So right now I have lines going from the trunk um, where the gas tank is all the way up to the engine bay but right now because I had stock injectors in I had to change it back to a barb type fitting um, and then put that back into the fuel rail and then go back out into the 6AN. Um, so it's a good starting point. We already have a lot of 6AN lines run, but we are going to have to run some more. Um, they're not exactly the easiest things to do in the world, but we'll get through it. So what we're going to go ahead and do, um, let me go ahead and start you guys off with this. This is our, these are two billet fuel rails. Um, these are from Paulnet Allnet. Um, I'll go ahead and he, you can find them on Facebook. I'll put a link in the description if I can. Um, and basically, um, he just makes these fuel rails and they fit the VG30. Um, I'll, it's kind of a weird way of um, the intake manifold where... These are both, they're identical in the way they're set up, but they're for de the separate sides of the injectors. The Basically, the holes here always go behind the bolt holes. Um, basically, the injectors are bolted down in front of where the injector sits. Um, so this is the front, and this is the front, but that's going to be flipped around. Um, basically, that's basically how it's going to work. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do, these are 550cc injectors. These are OEM Nissan. Um, you can see the part number right there. These supposedly came out of a G37 as well as a GTR. So these are really cool injectors, guys. Um, I got these for, I want to say $70 for all six of them, which is crazy if you don't know. Uh, 550cc injectors don't really come um, pretty cheap. So we're going to see how well these work. Um, because they're OEM Nissan, I'm not having too big of a problem with it. And uh, because they came in the GTR and the G37, I think it's going to be good for about our power goals. Um, we are looking for about 300 horsepower. Um, supposedly these can do up to about four, um, which if you look at what the G37 does, it's naturally aspirated. Um, it's really right about there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use these. The problem with these is that they have different um, inject or different connector types. So you can see these are our new connectors. I went ahead and got these on rockauto.com. Um, I forget what they are. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description. I think it's like a 2013 G37 or something that I got these from. Um, other than that, we have six of these for all the new ones, and then we also have thread sealant for our AN fittings on the sides here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start installing our injectors in the fuel rails, and I'm going to go ahead and soak them in gasoline first to keep these boots from tearing as we install them. Alright guys, so what I went ahead and just did is I went ahead and cleaned our fuel rails um, with a, just like a brake clean just to keep them all the dust particles off of them. And now what we're going to do, I went ahead and set them up so that this is going to be facing outside of the car, where it's going to just be these nuts, and then this will be on the inside the brackets. So we're going to go ahead and face the clips outside as well, just like this. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do, I went ahead and filled this up with just a little bit of gasoline. We're going to go ahead and we're going to dip the end in here, get it nice and lubricated. Just put a bit, a little bit in there as well, and then we're going to slowly, evenly press our fuel injectors into the fittings. All right. Well, it took a little bit more force than I thought it was going to, but we can see it's all the way seated, all the way to the bottom, and we'll just give it a nice tap. And there it is. We're going to go ahead and do that with all six of these. Alright, so as you can see, after a lot of <laughs> angry and upset pushing, I was finally able to get these in. They were pretty difficult, I will give it that. Um, definitely you want to use gasoline or something to keep it from tearing. Those O-rings really like to grab around the outside. you got to be really careful um, and just kind of carefully push it in. These ones were a little bit difficult because they have little tabs on them and it was digging into my finger. It was making me upset. But uh, I finally got them in, and uh, it looks like they're all doing pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and test fit them in the car right now. Um, these are slotted, so you can move these up and down depending on what injector you have. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get them, and then we're going to tighten it just a little bit more, um, just so we get a good seal. 
These brown O-rings are actually going to take the place of the black ones that come originally. Um, they're the same size and everything, and so this injector is going to sit down to the manifold just a little bit. Um, so basically that's how we're going to do We're going to go and test fit it real quick, and then once that's done, I'm going to bolt these up real hard. And um, I'm also going to put some AN fittings that I already have in. Alright guys, I apologize I didn't get to film the actual installation of the um, actual fuel rails themselves, so this is me from the future. Um, but I did want to touch on a couple points um, that are really going to help you out. So one, the biggest thing, if you did the CHTS relocation to the upper intake manifold like I did, and I have a video on that, um, basically it's going to give you a problem. You can see, well you might not be able to see, right in there is the CHTS sensor and the fuel rail. And you can see that there's a hole in my fuel rail right there. Basically, if you move the CHTS sensor, the plug, the hard physical plastic piece, um, will actually hit the fuel rail and it won't let you seat the injector properly. Um, and this is a problem because you obviously need them to seat perfect. Um, so I didn't want to go back to the original CHTS location. So basically these fuel rails, see if we can get a good view on them. It's basically just a solid tube. So this is a big solid piece and there's a tube up on the top and then right where the injectors are, it's drilled down. The rest of this is solid aluminum. So I just figured that if all that I did is just cut a hole in the solid aluminum, as long as it didn't get too high in order to avoid uh, where the fuel was running through, then I'd be fine. And I cut it and I was fine. So uh, if you have the CHTS relocation, that is going to be a big thing. Next thing is the actual fittings right here. Um, you can see in there. So I have a blue piece into this black 90 degree. You want all in one because it's going to hit on your water filler neck. You can see right there where I shaved it away just a tiny little bit to get it to fit. I'm going to replace this because they are actually still touching. It's not a perfect clearance. Um, but basically, if you don't get a piece that is, I believe it's, it'll flash on the screen right now what the right one is. I think it's half inch NPT. Um, it's just a pipe thread and then I have it going into my 6AN fuel line um, and it goes into a 90 and then another 90. Um, but basically you want the NPT to 6AN 90 degrees um, just coming right out of the fuel rail because that will give you a problem and you'll hit the water filler neck if you don't. Um, I, didn't, I didn't find any NPT to 6AN that was 180 degrees, that would honestly be the most ideal because we would just want to go back right here along the fuel rail and back down. Um, but I wasn't able to find that, so if you can, then hey, that's good for you. Um, but this other side you can see, um, you can just do use a regular fitting to 180 um, and it's fine. And so now once we go all the way back, we're going to look at the AN lines now. So I have the as I mentioned earlier in the video, I've already done all of my lines 6 a.m. so this was easy for me. Um, but basically, they come up into my fuel filter right here. This is an Evil Energy fuel filter. It's pretty big, um, and you can replace the fuel filter inside or just clean it out. So that's why I really like it, and it comes with 6 a.m., 8 a.m., and 10 a.m. fittings. Um, so it really fits all your applications. And then it goes into the T right there where it splits off. Um, and then we have this one that goes to the far side, this one goes to the close side. And and it goes fuel in from the back and then out the front and then they both come back around again that's why that's 180 and then back and around and into the fuel pressure regulator now this isn't the most uh, beautiful line routing you can see it's just kind of all over um, and they do make uh, I forget they're like brackets kind of that just hold all your lines together I've got zip ties you can see zip tie there you can see zip tie there and they haven't failed me yet but you want to keep them up away from your exhaust manifold, um, and that's pretty much the only thing that you have to look out for. Now let's go ahead and talk about the fuel pressure regulator real quick. I have a, I believe it's called a K motor. Um, basically it's an aeromotive uh, fuel pressure regulator. It's a knockoff of that though. So instead of paying, I think the aeromotives are like $150, this one was only 75, I believe. So about half the price. Um, so really, I used it because it was still a decent quality one, but not super expensive, and I was trying to do this on a budget. I wasn't trying to be 100% um, because I would I would have done like Mishimoto and everything um, and some super fancy stuff if I was going, but I really wanted to do uh, budget. And so that's what I did. This is still a good, this isn't something you want to cheap out on. This is still a good quality regulator. Um, and all the reviews were really good. And I believe I have a link to it on my website under the uh, 
the NA2T swap page, but you can go ahead and check that out. Um, but yeah, so I believe stock fuel pressure is 40 PSI. So whatever injectors you get, you're going to have to see at what PSI that they're making that CC. So these were 50 CCs, sorry, 550 CCs at, I think it was, it's something like two bar, maybe it was three bar, um, but you have to convert it to PSI and it ended up being like 40, eight PSI I think it converted to. Um, so these are actually close to do about like 530 cc's when I have them at the stock 40 PSI fuel pressure. Because this is an adjustable fuel pressure regulator, I could bring it back up and they'd be 550 cc's. I could crank it up to 70 PSI and they'd be like 600 something cc's. Um, it really just depends on your application and what you want to do. Um, and then anyways, from the bottom of that fuel pressure regulator, it goes back out into the tank. There are adapters you can get to go from the metal hard line to 6AN, um, and Turbocharge Creations has a good video on that as well. I did not do that, I just ran lines um, just from my previous problems with my pump. Um, but that was pretty much uh, it. So I think this is pretty good. I did upgrade my fuel pump to the Walbro 450. I really, really, really recommend this pump. Um, a lot of people like the 255, and I had the 255, and one, it gave me problems. It, kept, it I don't know what it was, if it was grounding out or something, um, but it kept blowing fuses, um, and it, it ruined the pump. I don't know what it was. But biggest thing is the 255 is loud. It is such a loud pump. You hear it when you turn the key on. You hear it when you're driving around. You hear it all the time. The 450, even though it's got over double or almost double the flow rate, you can barely hear it when the car is off. It is such a good fuel pump. I really recommend that, guys, and it's gonna give you a lot more flow rate than the 255. Um, it's just better all around. Um, I believe that is it for the fuel system, so if you guys have any questions on what I did here, drop a comment down below. Um, and I'm going to try to make as many videos as I can. I didn't really get to film a lot of the stuff towards the second half, because I was really trying hard to get it done. Um, but I've, I've got plenty of time now, so if you guys have any questions, drop them down below. Um, and I will definitely try to answer them as best as I can. I hope this helped you guys out, and I hope you guys are planning some super cool, crazy builds as well. Um, and I will see you guys later. And definitely check out the ZGarage.net. I've got great write-ups on there. Um, and I've also got some really cool uh, merch in the store tab. Check that out as well. All right, guys, I'll see you later.